Dealing with the IRS strikes fear into the hearts of most people. I know it may not feel like it, but you actually have rights when it comes to dealing with the IRS. In 2014, the IRS established 10 taxpayer rights, and we're going to take a look at those rights today. If you are ever audited or have to deal with the IRS on any level, you can always refer to these rights. So let's get started. Right number one, the right to be informed. Taxpayers have the right to know what they need to do to comply with the tax laws. When explaining things to taxpayers, IRS representatives should give clear explanations. For instance, if you're audited and the auditor makes an adjustment, the IRS has to give you a specific reason why an adjustment was made or a claim was denied. If you receive a tax bill, it has to show the tax, interest, and penalties separately. The bill also has to state why you owe the amount. If you enter into a payment plan or installment agreement to pay your taxes, the IRS must send you an annual statement so you will know your balance. Two, the right to quality service. You have a right to receive prompt, courteous, and professional service. The IRS representative has to speak to you in a way that you can understand. You can even ask for a supervisor if you believe that you have received poor service. If you agree to have the IRS call you, they will call you between 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. The IRS will never contact you and threaten you with arrest or prison. Three, the right to pay no more than the correct amount of tax. You have the right to pay only what you legally owe. This includes penalties and interest. If you believe that an amount has not been applied correctly to your account, you can contact the IRS and have them address it. If you believe that there is an error on your tax bill, you may also write to the address on the bill and send in any supporting documentation. You just have to send in your documentation within the time frame on the letter. If you owe money to the IRS and they did not assess the amount until after the time period allowed by law, you can let the IRS know that you are not going to pay that amount and they will have to remove that amount from your balance owed. If you have interest accruing on your account due to errors and delays by the IRS, you can have the IRS remove part of the interest from your account. Four, the right to challenge the IRS's position and be heard. You can challenge audit adjustments and any proposed changes to your taxes by providing additional documentation. If the IRS sends you a letter saying that you made a math or clerical error on your tax return, you have 60 days to challenge it. If the IRS does not agree with your position, you can take it to the United States Tax Court before paying the adjustment. Most of the time, you will be able to request a hearing before the Office of Appeals if the IRS sends you a letter saying they plan to seize your bank account or any other assets, or if the IRS files a federal tax lien. Five, the right to appeal an IRS decision in an independent forum. You can appeal most IRS decisions with the Office of Appeals. You normally cannot go to appeals until after you go to tax court. As a matter of fact, back in 2016, after an audit, Facebook tried to bypass the tax court and go directly to appeals. Facebook claimed that the Taxpayer Bill of Rights would allow the company to go directly to appeals, but the IRS said no. So Facebook went to court to try to force the IRS to allow them to bypass tax court. Facebook lost the suit and had to go ahead and go to the United States Tax Court. Six, the right to finality. You have the right to know how long the IRS has to audit a particular tax year or collect a tax debt. Unless you file a false or fraudulent return, the IRS has three years from the date that you file your return to assess additional taxes for that tax year. If you are audited, an auditor will let you know once they have finished your audit. If the IRS makes an adjustment to your taxes, you will be told the maximum amount of time that you have to challenge the adjustment. Generally, if you have paid taxes and you file a claim for refund, and if the IRS denies your refund claim, or they take longer than six months to do anything about the claim, you can file a refund suit. Seven, the right to privacy. The IRS will be no more intrusive than necessary. You have due process rights. The IRS can only seize a limited amount of your wages. The IRS cannot seize your primary home without court approval, and they can only seize a certain amount of your furniture and household items. The IRS cannot investigate your lifestyle during an audit unless it appears that you have unreported income. Eight, the right to confidentiality. Any information that you provide to the IRS will not be disclosed to third parties unless you authorize it or if it's allowed by law. If the IRS is going to contact a third party, such as your employer or bank, they will give you notice in advance. Nine, the right to retain representation. 
you can choose to have someone who is allowed to represent taxpayers to represent you when you deal with the IRS. You don't have to attend any meetings with the IRS and your representative unless the IRS summons you. If you cannot afford representation, you can ask for assistance from a low-income taxpayer clinic. 10. The right to a fair and just tax system. When it comes to your ability to provide information or your ability to pay, the IRS has to consider all facts and circumstances. If you're having financial difficulty, you can ask for assistance from the Taxpayer Advocate Service. If you cannot pay all of your taxes at one time, you can set up a payment plan. I will include a link in the description box for the payment agreement application. You can ask the IRS to accept less than the full amount that you owe by submitting an offer in compromise. You can submit an offer in compromise when you believe you A, don't owe all or part of the tax debt, B, you can't pay the full amount within the time period set by law, or C, paying the full amount would cause financial hardship. There you have it. Hopefully you know a little more now on how to use the 10 rights you have as a taxpayer. See you next time.